Bob Rice is the author of The Alternative Answer. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, when you talk to folks on Main Street and they hear the words alternative investments, they tend to get a little bit spooked. Yeah. How do you get them beyond that and really thinking about alternative strategies for their por portfolios? Well, it's simple. You ask them what you need the portfolio to do. The answer these days for an awful lot of people is, I need it to make c more current income. The search for yield is on. And you simply can't find the right answers to that in traditional stocks and bonds these days you tend to see a lot of portfolios out there with stocks and bonds and nothing else. Right. And, and that portfolio historically has been so much more volatile than people realize. I mean, it's only 2008. It's remember what happened in that and, or in, in 2000. Remember what happened then? 88. Remember what happened then? And the, the fact is that these big crashes are devastating to individual portfolios. Now, if you have a 200-year investment horizon, no problem. Wait it out. But if you don't, the trick, I think, is you've got to find ways of really getting much more diverse than you can in straight stocks, investing in ways like long, short mutual funds that provide downside protection as well as upside opportunity, uh, protecting yourself against inflation and currency devaluation, and generating more current income. And all of those, each of those strategies is addressed by a different kind of alternative investment. And so there's not one alternative investment that kind of fits everybody, right? If, if you're trying to preserve wealth, if you're trying to accumulate, if you've got a little extra cash to play around with, there are different alternative strategies for you to consider. Yes, this is really the important thing. People talk about their alternatives bucket as if all of the things that are in that bucket are, are identical to each other. And that's just fundamentally, totally wrong. What's great about alternatives is that they can serve, the, the right alternatives can serve each of the different goals that portfolios should be achieving for people. One is more current income, one is risk reduction, one is getting paid more for the risk you do choose to take, and one is wealth preservation against inflation and currency devaluation. So you have to ask yourself, what do I need to do? And then look at the strategies. In, in the book, you have eight strategies, eight different alternatives for each one of those four goals. So there are 32 different kinds of alternatives you can look at. One of the things you also talk about in the book, though, is things to watch out for. Uh, you know, you see a lot of marketing materials these days about new alternative, alternative investment products that are out there. Yes. What should people look out for and what should they stay away from? Well, there are, the, the book has a whole, almost a whole chapter on this at the end because you're right. People are really looking for new ideas, and that makes them vulnerable sometimes to big mistakes. So you want to look for big sales loads. That's number one. I mean, there's really no need to pay a giant sales load to get into any product. Number two, when products are freely tradable like REITs or BDCs, and you can get a traded version of the product, why are you going into a non-traded, illiquid version of the product, which a lot of brokers are trying to sell right now? So a non-traded REIT or a non-traded BDC what the, the sales pitch is, they're saying, well, you know, that makes you not vulnerable to the ups and downs of the market, which is a little bit like saying, hey, I want to sell you a car with no engine because you'll never be in a crash. It, it just doesn't make any sense. And now for individual investors who are potentially thinking about investing in hedge funds or doing some angel investing, maybe some private equity investing, is there a way for them to kind of dip their toes into those um, alternatives without kind of going all in? Oh, absolutely. So first of all, nearly all of those strategies are available in really liquid formats right now uh, in, in the market. So you can, you can find ways of investing in mutual funds and EDFs and, and BDCs and uh, all sorts of other kinds of alternatives that will allow you access. But in any of these strategies, whether it's angel investing or peer-to-peer -peer lending, which is a great opportunity for people to make current, more current income, you absolutely can dip your toe in. And the better sites like Gust or AngelList for angel investing or Prosper or the Lending Club for peer-to-peer -peer lending have a lot of educational material on there. So obviously, get educated, make small bets at first while you're learning the ropes. And if you want to get into angel investing, the best thing you can do is join an angel group of other investors and learn from them before you make your first investment. Great, Bob. Thank you so much for the advice. Thank you. We've been speaking with Bob Rice, author of The Alternative